Hello again, fellow brothers and sisters. Um, today I want to come to you talking about prayer, okay? I want to go in and talk about prayer, worship, and fasting, okay? And how all three of these things tie in. Um, of course, there's different forms of prayer, and I would love to get into all that, but there are people out there that actually study these things. And um, you can always ask the Lord yourself and go into a study yourself regarding these things. But I want to talk um, regarding experiences that I've had and things of that nature. But I want to keep it pretty broad because I don't want to get too deep into detail. I want to keep this video pretty short. Okay? Basically like a message. So... Fasting, the Lord tells us that we must fast without, or I'm sorry, prayer. The Lord tells us that we must pray without ceasing, okay? So, prayer should be done at all times in the day, okay? And when the disciples ask Jesus, teach us how to pray, okay? He gave the Lord's Prayer. And you can look into this. It's the, our Father who are in heaven, hallowed be your name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. But lead us not into temptation and deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. And then you can add in Jesus' name, amen. Um, now, what this prayer is, it is it is every element um, of what the Lord expects from us, okay? So, it's, a, it's rather a checklist. It's not something that should be murmured over and over again like the Catholics do. Rather, it is a, like a pivotal um, point or like a staple for the things that we should be praying upon. And of course we can come to him with personal matters. And of course he's given us authority over demons to crush and trample over snakes and scorpions. So, um, you know, the Lord is our protector. We can pray for protection, the body of armor, helmet of salvation, breastplate of righteousness, belt of truth, shots of peace, sword of the word, shield of faith in Jesus name. Guard yourself with this morning, night and meditate on what you're actually guarding yourself with okay um the lord wants us to be soldiers of peace the last thing that we're lacing on is our shods or shoes of peace so i mean all of our weapons and our functions this shield is to guard us from the darts of the enemy okay our helmet of salvation we are saved by the Godhead, by Jesus Christ. And, you know, our, our faith keeps us guarded, okay? It keeps our heart guarded. The, the helmet of salvation keeps our mind guarded. Breastplate of righteousness, I already talked, oh no, it was breastplate of righteousness. Doing the right thing, you know? Guard your heart in knowing right from wrong. Um, and then it, it you will build on to a foundation and have a more in-depth understanding as you move on with the Lord, okay? Um, belt of truth, being truthful, being honest, Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life, okay? And it's also symbolic when we talk about um, kind of girding your loins, which it also talks about in the Bible a lot. Um, protecting your young, protecting your youth or your, um, I don't want to say like, reproductive system but pretty much in a sense um that is that's the sim um symbolism or my interpretation rather because remember an interpretation is not the same as as a translation okay so these multiple interpretations they all come from the same same source same Jesus Christ, same Holy Spirit, okay? So, uh, sort of the word. Now, we we find that in the Bible, talking about a double-edged sword, 
um, our tongue is also likened to a sword, okay? Double-edged. So double-edged means that it could be used for good or bad, okay? Separating the wheat from the chaff. A sword is just symbolic for a splitting device, okay? Um, so this goes hand in hand, of course, with truth and with um, separating and with using the word to slice through the enemy's, um, just cut down the enemy's plans, okay? He will not prosper, okay? Um, and then the shots of peace. We need to be spreading peace, okay? Now, the Lord may call you to do something somewhat confrontational, okay? That's not what I'm talking about. I'm not talking about, uh, I mean, you should be looking not to cause strife, looking not to be a troublemaker, of course, and always double and triple check and cross-reference um, the things that you're hearing because the Lord said to ponder um, these new things which are coming to pass or these new things that people are saying. Because the Lord said that this knowledge would increase. What knowledge is he talking about, you know? And, of course, it, it works for both sides. I'm talking um, more along the spiritual side of um, our brothers and sisters, like the, the church. So, in the church, what we see is um, that there's an obvious, these new understandings coming forward, these new um, interpretations and, uh, you know, people talking about, dreaming about aliens, talking about, dreaming about, seeing things that perhaps we never put two and two together in the past, okay? Um, all I know is that when I, when I came, sorry about that. When I came to YouTube uh, pretty recently, I was terrified to say the things that I believed because I thought that I would sound crazy. And the Lord told me, tell them, okay? I'm talking AI, um, you know, genetic uh, modifications, uh, V A C C I N. I don't even want to say the word. The sh shots, you know, um, and all these other things. Like the Lord never showed me these things in the past, so you know we all need to get unbrainwashed. So these, um, what we think is new, is gonna be opened up to us, and people are gonna start speaking about it. Okay. So Christians in the rapture, like I never knew that that was a thing. And I mean, call me late, but the Lord is giving me my dreams and my thing. Like he's given me my own journey to come to this conclusion. And others also have had their own journeys to come to this conclusion. So now what we need to do is we need to push forward and see what is this new teachings? What are these new things? And they're, but the Bible says nothing's new under the sun, you know. We just forget about our history, but it repeats itself. So we're gonna we're gonna get very get very used to hearing these new things and we're gonna start to discern these things like things that I would tolerate I, I even though I didn't like them, things I would tolerate in the past, I can't stand them now. I can't even I can't even bring myself to even listen or look or I don't want to be near it. So there's something happening in my spirit. I am changing more and more and more and so are my brothers and sisters around me. So another thing that I always pray for, I'm just giving you guys some tips, some staples, um, you know, obviously with the Lord's prayer, forgiveness, uh, uh, worshiping the Lord. You are holy, Father. Um, I give, you know, I give way for you to do your will. I speak your will into the atmosphere. Declare these things, right? And in this case, you are intercessing, okay? So intercessory prayer has to do with standing in the gap, 
praying for those who don't pray earnestly, um, seeking the Lord and things of that nature. Now, you know, the Moses did this, the priests did this, and in some cases the prophets did this. Um, but I want to talk about that next. I don't want to get too deep into that because that kind of goes hand in hand with fasting as well. But um, just on a daily basis, like a woman praying for her husband daily is interceding, um, especially if he's not a believer or a strong believer. And it can go vice versa, of course. Um, praying for your children, protect your children, protect your brothers and sisters. Something I always pray for is that my brothers and sisters, body of armor of Christ daily, okay? Every time I pray for myself and my children and my family, I also put it on my family in Christ because they mean the world to me. I love you guys. And, and I just, I need you to be protected. I need us all to do our job here. All right. But the Lord also wants um, a nation of priests. So priesthood means standing in the gap, means praying, means interceding. Okay. Jesus is there and Jesus has been here and Jesus has done that. But what did he say? He said that you are going to do greater things even than me. And that is a huge statement because Jesus died to save the world. And he's alive. Okay. I always have to put that because he's not dead anymore. He is alive. But now it's our turn. And he said that we will even do greater things. So, you know, and I, I want to add something with this. Uh, just a little nugget. I love my children. I want to give a quick word. The Lord told me that um, there's going to be a season now. Okay, we're coming into this season now where there's going to be just a complete and utter like movement of the spirit that we've never seen before. Okay, it's going to take us back to Acts. It's going to take us back to Exodus. And it's all going to merge together. This prophecy is going to be fulfilled in full. Okay? Anything that's been a foreshadow, anything that's happened in the past, these are foreshadows. These are partial um, fulfillments of the Holy uh, of the, I mean, what the Holy Spirit had to bring, but of prophecy. Okay? And you will see this pattern everywhere that Jesus even said when he was sitting at the table um, at the Last Supper in the book of Luke, I believe, he said that that um, it will come time for Passover to be fulfilled. So he was, he was saying that Passover is not fulfilled, not yet. And this works with every single timeline, Jew and Gentile. This works with every single alignment of the stars. It works with every single thing that happens on the planet it's universal it is it's something that happens throughout the entire uh universe okay not only the earth the heavens and the earth god's <laughs> we pray for the lord's will to be done on earth as it is in heaven so that means that we are in alignment with the stars and I've done, I've, I've briefed over this a few times. I don't want to go into this teaching, but what happens up there, it's God's will for it to happen down here. Okay. So what is going to happen is a fulfillment of Exodus, um, you know, and obviously Jesus fulfilled, um, the law of Moses. So there's going to be a fulfillment. I'm sorry, bear with me. I'm trying to explain this. Basically, what's coming up is that the Lord is going to prove to us and to all of the nations that he is who he says that he is. Okay? So this means that we're going to be enduring some heartaches and some turmoils but for the glory of God okay 
And this takes us to a very high level of understanding. Um, like with Paul. So Paul said that he rejoiced in his weaknesses because the Lord worked with him. He boasts in his weaknesses, not in his strengths. Okay? Because he knew that that's when the Lord was heavy on him. And, and especially in the areas that the Lord was heavy on him. Same thing with Moses. Moses had a speech impediment and his primary job was to speak. Okay, so the Lord put him in a leadership position. He said, nope, you're going to do this. And and then uh, Moses talking back, you know, but my mouth doesn't work correctly. Um, and he had a speech impediment, something of that nature. And the Lord said, who made your mouth? You know what I mean? He doesn't want perfect people. Jesus was perfect. Okay. He's, he designed us the way that shows his glory. So he wants to be our legs if we're disabled. He wants to be our voice when we can't speak. He wants to be our ears when we're deaf. He wants to do these things. He wants to be our eyes to see. So, and in a sense, we are blind because we don't see the spiritual realm. So we need to, like the Lord says, to walk by faith and not by sight because the Lord is guiding us in the things that we cannot see, okay? So in this season that we're coming to, we're gonna need to be as limber as palm trees because they just flow with the storm, okay? And they don't break. And we need to be as deep-rooted as oak trees, okay? Oak trees are very healthy, they're very deep rooted, and they're very tall and glorious. And we need to be built like that uh, for these seasons that we're coming up to. And the only way to do this is to perfect your prayer and your relationship with the Lord, okay? So in this season that we're coming to, we may have no food. We may have no water. We may have no... Um, you know, no, no protection uh, with our with our physical uh, the way that we perceive things in the flesh. We're not going to have these things, which causes panic in most. But spiritually, the Lord knows what He's doing. Okay, stocking up is useless because what the Lord shows me is that. In the Bible, they always ran. Like every single scenario, everybody ran. Everyone ran. Jesus ran. The apostles ran. The um, there was only one time that they were like shut in. Okay. Um, all these all these people they ran. They ran. You know what I mean? They weren't in one place. The spies. It's everybody ran. Okay. And then there's also patterns of supernatural um, intervention, okay? Where where the Lord just supernaturally, like you are like, there's no way uh, logically, all right, in the flesh, that this will, like anyone will survive this. And this is where the Lord comes in. Like for example, in the wilderness, okay? The wilderness is a metaphor metaphor for being lonely, being isolated, really um, having no choice but to meditate, okay? And to ponder and to get close to the Lord. And I mean, I would say definitely now is that time, but it's going to increase. Let's think about the wilderness uh, with Moses. They were complaining because the Lord took his people, excuse me, out of Egypt. And when they were taken out of Egypt and they were in the wilderness, they were like, you're trying to kill us. We have no water. And this is what I see now, people panicking. We have no water. But they were on the move. So even if they had water, you can't carry all that water with you. If you're running for your life, you're not going to grab your whole stock of food and water, okay? 
it's impossible. So, and I mean, you know, anyway, I'm, I'm getting too deep in this thought. But, uh, you know, in the wilderness, they, they complained and, and the Lord made a way. When it looked impossible, uh, Moses struck a, a rock and water came out. And when they thought there was no food, God miraculously made food happen, okay? Something they've never seen before, manna. And, and also quails. So, you guys, that's the season that we're coming into. There's going to be miracles. There's going to be um, protection that comes upon us where there may be an earthquake and your house is the only house that is untouched, okay? This, this is a supernatural um, flow that I'm, I'm, I'm speaking in right now. But we need to activate faith and prayer right now, okay? Now, and I'm assuming that you already have a foundational um, knowledge. That's what Paul was talking about. Usually the people that watch my channel are a little more uh, matured um, and even surpass me in some areas. But what the Lord wants is he's giving messages to all his people. All of those who are to build the nation of priests, all of those who have their very particular missions. He's speaking to the prophets to speak to his people. He's having people prophesy and he wants everyone to somewhat balance or perfect themselves to the best of their ability. Obviously, Jesus makes us perfect. Okay, for those who want to uh, think too hard into what I'm saying, you know, you know, even Paul said that he's afraid that the simplicity of Jesus would just ensnare them in a trap. Um, Jesus makes us perfect. What I'm what I'm talking about is getting our, our our mind, our body, and our soul in check, okay, and in alignment with the Lord and the Holy Spirit, so that He can work through us, okay. You can't put uh, a stick through three hoops that are like off okay you gotta you gotta bring the hoops together to put the stick through it okay i don't know why that came to mind but the lord needs to align us okay so this is where the, the prayer comes in now praying for protection um praying just constantly if you speak in tongues pray in tongues constantly okay it's a mystery no one knows what you're saying even paul said he doesn't know what he's saying so he prays in English or in his language and he prays in uh, in his other tongue. Okay. Um, always. One, one thing I always do a tip for me. I always pray that the will of God is done like above all things. Even if I want something, I will say, Father, I pray for your will to be done. Okay. Um, okay. So intercession. I'm going to go into intercession. I don't have anything written down. I'm just doing this uh, spontaneously. Uh, I, Holy Spirit, speak through me. He usually does. Um, I usually pray before I come on. But when I watch a video back, I get annoyed because there's some things I didn't touch up on that I would have wanted to, but it's okay. Intercession uh, and fasting go hand in hand, and I'm going to speak in regards to this. So intercession is when you pray on behalf of somebody. I kind of already touched base on that. But there's a lot going on in the spiritual realm, okay? Um, we have a hard time understanding that there's groups inside of groups inside of groups inside of groups inside of groups, okay? For example, uh, and the reason why I say this is because there's a whole spiritual realm that functions very similarly, or basically we mimic the spiritual world, okay? And the stars are just a reflection of the things that we can't see in the supernatural. Okay, I don't know if you can understand that. But the according to the, what the Lord gave me to understand. I know some people out there, they really understand stars. Um, I don't like watching other people too much because it kind of distorts the understanding the Lord gave me. So um, I like to stick kind of with what the Lord showed me, okay? 
So in the spiritual realm, you got, let's say we got America, right? So America is a grouping, right? It's uh, the United States of America. It's a country. That's first group, okay? Now inside that country, there's different sections. There's different, first of all, there's different states, okay? Um, and there's different authoritarian uh, powers over those states, over those counties, over those cities, um, over the entire uh, 50 states that are connected. Um, and, you know, that's, that's one aspect. You know, you got, you got your Democrats, your Republicans, the whole political side of things. You got your religious side of things. Uh, you got denominations. You got, um, you know, groupings inside and belief systems inside the denominations. You got, uh, then that's just the religious side. And you got different uh, racial groups, um, different levels of pay groups, pay levels. Um, and like, this is exactly the demonic powers. Um, the Lord says that we don't see who's seated on thrones in the spiritual realm. We don't see these things. Um, Daniel, I always like to talk to Dan about Daniel because in, uh, I think Daniel 10 through 12, I believe, um, he's on a fast, right? And all this activity is taking place in the spiritual realm. And, you know, it's just like Jesus comes forward and he says, hey, um, yeah, God heard you since day one. I don't remember if that one was Jesus, but he saw Jesus later on who explained everything to him. Um, but he's, you know, he sees his angels hovering over rivers, which is very symbolic. And, um, you know, he talks about the prince of Persia, but, you know, there's a king of Persia. So the prince means principality it means principle okay when you look in the etymology of the greek and the i think it's he um he, it's either hebrew or aramaic and and daniel i believe is aramaic but it means principle or principality prince means okay so prince uh was actually the spiritual realm of what was going on okay and now the bottom, I don't want to get into all this, it's too much. Well, this is what's happening right now. And when you, when you intercede on behalf of somebody and you kind of learn how the spiritual world works, um, if the Lord brings you to that mission, you're going to start casting down things. You're going to start rebuking things. You're going to start binding things. You're going to start um, praying against certain things and, and praying for God's will and uh, you know you'll start to grow in discernment in what spirit uh, is abnormal versus what spirit needs to be molded like for example right when you have children you never know what you're gonna get <laughs> it's like it's a, it's a surprise um, I'm the type of person who is extremely, like, I'm a perfectionist. So the fact that I have a son and a, and a daughter, and me and my husband are very strong-willed people, very, very opinionated people. Um, so that's interesting. But my children, let's just say that they turn out that way. And there's a power struggle in my home. Okay, uh, you know, I don't try to rule over my husband. I respect his authority. Like, I love that. I don't think that a woman should ever be over a man. But when it comes to my children, um, that's where I take my stand because that's my territory. Okay, <laughs> now you're stepping into my territory. I, that's what the Bible says. I'm over the children. And this is before I even knew that that was my territory i just naturally instinctually knew that that is my territory and that means you know my children mean everything to me you're not going to um overpower me in that area that's my area okay so certain belief systems and stuff like that now that spirit that i have in me right uh some would say 
oh, that's his spirit of, um, uh, was it like rebellion or, or whatever, like trying to uh, be over my husband. And that's not the case at all. Because in the Bible, it says that that's my territory. Now, when I read the word, that's why the word needs to align with us and the Holy Spirit in the Bible. And, you know, we have a, a spirit, a soul, and um, a spirit, soul, and something else. Can't think of it right now. But when you need to put your flesh in check a little bit, and you need to, like, reword what you're saying... Or you need to remold or ask the Lord to remold that spirit about you to match his will. Okay? Because in other places in the Bible it says uh, to be peaceable you know, peaceable and peaceful and, and certain things. And the Lord does like a, a peaceful or peaceable woman or wife. Now, I'm going to be honest. Okay? I think that... Women like that are absolutely beautiful. And it's true. Like a, a, a relaxed, peaceable wife is so admirable and so beautiful. And it's something I've actually always um, inspired to be. But honestly, naturally, that's not the spirit that I carry. Okay? And I'm going to tell you that I'm very bold and very outspoken. But I'm going to tell you there, there's people like that in the Bible as well, okay? So, for example, Sarah, which was number one, um, you know, Abraham and Sarah were the parents of a generation of children, like, you know, like um, God's people. And this is both metaphoric and physical, okay? So... Sarah was to mother, uh, you know, Abraham's, like, unction, his bringing in, his manifestation into the world um, that the Lord promised him. And Abraham actually means father of multitudes in plural. And in a multitude is, um, it, it can go, it could be many things. It could be many. It could be um uh, national, like national, like different races and tongues and people, right? Um, well, I'm going to leave it at that. And then Sarah means princess, principality, rulership, okay? So this is what, and, and what did she do? She told Abraham, get rid of that slave no more, Okay? That was it. She and he respected that. And the Lord respected that. Everyone respected it. Okay. So here we have a, an outspoken woman. And then we have someone like Hannah who, you know, she didn't, she would cry about it to the Lord, which he loved too. So the Lord knows what he's bringing in. Like I said, he makes each one of us and molds us according to our weaknesses and our strengths and so on and so forth. So also we have esther right so esther was another one who interceded and fasted on behalf of her people now the reason why i mentioned the different groupings and things of that nature and the principalities and the realms is because you need fasting to help with these things that you cannot see and when you intercede you become a target i'm going to be honest because now um, all of this light is flowing from you. And the Lord said that you're not going to put a lamp underneath a table. You're going to put it on top of the table for it to shine. Everyone must see it. And when he talks about everyone, he's not talking about the flesh. He's that too. But he's talking about it'll be more subtle to the flesh. Okay. If you're doing what the Lord wants you to do. But he's talking about the spirit realm. Okay? In one part of the Bible, it says that the Lord is doing all this in us, giving us all this knowledge to basically show us off to the spiritual realm. To, and, and I always, like, I heard that pretty recently. It's just a Bible verse I never really heard before. And I've, I've read the Bible over, 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 over. But it's registering with me right now that the Lord wants to show these creatures that we are worthy okay of all this knowledge and understanding 
So when when you intercede, you become uh, somewhat of a target because now spiritual realm can see you, okay? So, and you're blind. You're blind, but they see you and they will start to scatter like roaches, my friend, okay? Because the anointing and the Holy Spirit and, and the presence of God will be so strong on you that they will not be able to stand your presence, okay? It's like Moses interceded for his people, he came down, his face was shining. And he had, he had to hide it from his people with a veil, okay? Very symbolic. So now, what's going on here? Uh, Esther tells everybody, go and fast, right? Because at this point, this, this is one person. She can't pray alone for this whole nation of people, her, her, all of her people and all of the evil people, right? So you got the, she's praying for her people to be saved. She's praying for the evil people, um, with the evil motives to stand down. And then she's praying, uh, for whatever's going on in the spiritual realm, because we do not wrestle with flesh and blood. We wrestle with principalities of of darkness in high places and other realms that we cannot see okay so that means don't be chopping people up or bam 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 that's not what god wants we're not wrestling with those people he wants us to pray that's who we're wrestling with okay so what we see here is she needs a grouping of people to shine light to get more roaches to scatter okay and it ends up working. Uh, also with fasting, the Lord Jesus said that, you know, only some demons can be removed with fasting. Uh, you know, the, the young boy, they prayed and prayed and prayed and prayed and prayed for him to be released from this demonic spirit. And Jesus said, some will not flee unless you fast. There's strong demons, strongholds that need to be uprooted. And we need to be moving and ushering in this presence of God, okay? Uh, like never before, he needs his nation of priests. He needs us to be in full. He's looking for his fullness. He needs us to become one. Drop your theologies. Drop your belief systems. Drop your religion, okay? Drop traditions of man. And seek the Lord. Be set apart, okay? That's what he wants. That's what Jesus did. Jesus was set apart, okay? But yet he brought the body of Christ together with his disciples and his ministers. His ministers were the women. Okay? Read about it in the Bible. Read all about it. Okay? There is something symbolic here. The ministers were the women. The women were very much a part of the ministry of Jesus Christ. There's a whole page dedicated to it. And there's another whole page dedicated uh, with Paul. And it says that God will pour his spirit out on all flesh. Sons, daughters, children. Okay? That's what the Lord says. So whatever belief systems, I can, I can just, I can cut it down immediately. Because my double-edged sword that the Lord has um, prepared me with. Okay? In these end days, there's no time to be playing games anymore. Okay? So those people that say, oh, my miracles aren't real. That's a lie. Okay? The Bible says that there's going to be a miracle. It says that there's going to be two witnesses that get up and rise up, body and all, okay, on the third day into heaven. That's a miracle. That sounds like a miracle to me, okay? There's people that don't believe in um, uh, speaking in tongues. Paul talks about speaking in tongues all the time, so what are you talking about? You can't say it's only the past. The Lord's word is living, it's forever and ever and ever and ever and ever, okay? And once our life is done, it's going to continue, okay? So we can't sit here and keep saying, oh, well, that already happened. History repeats itself, okay? It's going to continue to happen until everything is fulfilled in the Bible in full, okay? Not according to what man says, according to God. And that's another thing. Sorry, you guys. 
But right now, you hear all these people saying, oh, well, Jesus said he was coming. Well, you know, there's so many Christians that have said this for so long. And there's other Christians that say, I've given up on this because, you know, I've just been doing... Well, you've been doing it wrong, okay? You've been, you've been leaning on your own understanding, and the Lord tells us not to do that. He tells us not to do that. You will most definitely, absolutely, utterly, and completely fail if you're leaning on your own understanding. And I too am victim to this because when I came into this whole prophecy thing, the Lord was showing me patterns, but I didn't wait. I didn't wait. I immediately started, but luckily I praise the Lord that I didn't go too deep into it and I learned my lesson immediately, okay? So there's a lot of symbology and metaphors and there's really so much to study up on that it's just unfathomable, okay? And that every single person on this planet is going to play into God's will. And that everybody in Christ is going to come to their season of boldness um, because the Lord wants priests. That is, I mean, you guys, the priests stood in the holy place, in the tabernacle. This is symbolic. Okay, when you read in Revelation, it's the same situation. The Garden of Eden, the Tabernacle, and the Throne of Heaven. Three different realms. And you see that they all play the same part. And I have news. When it talks about in Esther with the, um, the inner courtroom and the outer courtroom and the garden. This is all symbolic. It's talking about the throne room. Okay. And those who can stand in the Holy of Holies, certain angels could stand in the Holy of Holies. I watched a prophet yesterday and I love her and she's, she knows what she's talking about, okay? She definitely knows, like one of very few people that have an outstanding understanding of many scriptures. But like I said, no one man can do it themselves. Nobody knows everything. Okay, so, you know, she was giving advice and um, people were messaging her or whatever. And she said some things, I don't want to get into a debate about it, that I, I know is false because the Lord showed me otherwise. Okay, and one of those things was um, when we die, uh, someone said that we become angels. And she said, no, that's not true. That's not, you need to open your heart to receive because I don't fully understand it myself. I will put that out there. But I will say that I've seen patterns, for example, um, when you look into the etymology of angelos um, in the Greek, angel, um, like basically angel, messenger, and star are all the same word. In, in the Greek text. Um, and I just studied the Hebrew, but I don't remember. It was a while back. But I, I remember seeing this pattern that uh, these three things were the same thing. Okay? Uh, and therefore, um, when, you, when you look into these patterns and how these words were used, the messengers were used as two different things. They were used as angels where... Um, you knew there were angels because of the context. Uh, and Ezekiel is obviously an angel, okay? And that's, you know, you saw the ones, certain ones that were in the presence of God. Um, that's what I was, you know, trying to connect for you. But the th those ones were angels, right? And others were people, okay? And, you know, there's a lot of Bible verses that talk about this, but pretty much um, that messengers were people. Also, prophet goes hand in hand with the word messenger as well. Apostle goes with messenger as well. So there, there's a lot of um, it just it, it gets deep. It gets deep. OK, now star um, with baby Jesus. And the account of Matthew, I believe, I believe it was the account of Matthew. Yeah, it is. 
um, a star ascended onto the baby Jesus Christ, okay? So, as if it entered him. Okay, so, I don't know what this symbolizes because I overthink things really deeply. Um, I don't know if it was a vision or a dream or if he saw a physical star come into the body of a baby. Um, but somehow Jesus was connected with something and it made him different. Okay. And, and it said also that he was conceived with the Holy Spirit. So I can't believe that it was the Holy Spirit because he was conceived with the Holy Spirit. And then when he baptized, something also ascended onto him, the dove, like a Holy Spirit. And he also received a star. So there's, I don't know if these are just different accounts, different ways of saying this, but something went inside of Jesus and all of these things coincide together, okay? Um, and in the, in the Bible, it does differentiate some things. It says that, you know, we will judge angels. And maybe there's a discrepancy in the way that these were translated. I would like to do more studies on this. Um, but all I'm saying is don't knock it if you don't 100% know, okay? So, you know, I do pray that you all are blessed. I pray that this helps somebody. Um, remember to fervently say in prayer to seek the Lord. Pray, 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 pray without ceasing. If you don't know what to say, thank the Lord. Worship him, you know? Worship is second like all these things are just equally important i just don't know what to say okay um god bless you all i love you bye